I have one comment and one question. So uh, first, uh, this lecture, I am first time uh, seeing this uh, presentation because of this is very important presentation for ICU doctors and anesthesia and any uh, medical specialist. Uh, just imagine uh, an anesthesia doctor before coming to OT and to start the case. It's like the pilot. It should be like the pilot of the airplane. For example, uh, Kuwait Airlines, you are going to, you are flying to Dubai. And the uh, captain of pilot is coming to you. There is 200 people sitting in the airplane and seeing, okay, we are flying to Dubai. God will save us. Don't worry. There is oxygen supply. Everything will be fine. I mean. And everybody will escape from the airplane. And same. Anesthesiologist coming to patient, and during the assess the patient, patient is seeing also for anesthesiologist. So he should come. Hi, salam alaikum. How are you? How are everybody? Everything is fine. So we will start our case. But inside the mind, anesthesiologist is going a lot of things. So it may be difficult intubation. So I have to prepare something else. Mind is going. Mind is running. But face is another face. This is a very useful and very useful lecture, this one is. Thank you very much. So my question is, what about confidence? Is it useful for anesthesiologists? I mean, 100% confidence. And from where it's coming? Thank you. OK. Now, confidence plays an important role in, in your mental map. Overconfidence is the problem. It's not confidence. It's overconfidence that's the problem. And again, if you remember my slide, the ones that run into trouble are the most experienced ones, and those are the ones who will have difficulties in making the right decision because of their mental map. Overconfidence is the problem. And again, there's a phenomenon which is overfocusing. If you overfocus on a certain point in your management of a stressful situation, you might take the wrong decision. Now, how do you build up your confidence? Your confidence is built up by experience, number one, and by the right knowledge and preparation for situations. That's how your confidence is built up. If you go through the situation, if you know the right knowledge for that situation, and if you, if you repeatedly go through it, you will find that you know, your confidence will build up nicely. I, I was going to give you an example. All of us went through um, primary school, secondary school, and high school, and all of us, Memorize Juz Amma, right? You're supposed to know it by heart from the first verse all the way to the last one. How many of you know it now? If I ask you to recite it without reading it, do you remember how many times we were repeating it and memorizing it and going to school? We forgot it all. It's the same thing with medical knowledge, exactly the same thing with medical knowledge and practice. You're going to forget the right decision to make when you're supposed to make the right decision. Okay, any other question? Just will allow one question. Another comment from Dr. Abdelaziz. Uh, I, I like the comment between uh, about pilots because I think we need to learn. Um, we, I have another talk about processes to improve how we could learn from aviation. But uh, do you think, the other question to ask yourself, do you think any captain or crew member in the airport or any company, who would say, who's flying the next day or doing the next uh, engineering for the next flight before he sent family to that airplane? If uh, ex-pilot is flying, I'm not flying. Do, do you think that happened in aviation? That never happened because they trust the system, the one that they work. Have you heard anybody asking who's giving anesthetic tomorrow in that room or who's doing that surgery? We're not yet very close to away from the standardization in aviation. If you ask any time that who's in ER or in the ward or at night or doing that surgery or anesthetic, that means there is a big variability. And these are always call for improvements to improve safety and standardization. And this is where we uh, drive the efforts. There is a question here. I can take only two questions, quick questions, please. Yeah. 
Dr. Mohammed, uh, let's say there is three parts of the performance stress uh, slope. What if in, uh, in, the last, in the last part, let's say my heart rate is 150, 160, 170, That's and I'm so inside the OT, what can I do to maybe go, go back or uh, gain control over my uh, uh, fine motor skills while I'm the only one in the OT? What can I do in, during this period? That's a very good question. Again. What you have to do is to train yourself to gather your thoughts, recollect your thoughts in a proper way, take a deep breath. You might have to stand back a little bit and just refocus again on the important stuff that's in front of you. Don't get distracted. Don't be like the, uh, the pipe fish going around, you know, not knowing what to do. Just focus on what you want to do, recollect your thoughts, and go through the algorithm if you have the algorithm in your mind. And don't freeze. Another question here another question and the last one thank you uh, dr ahmed and dr boker a question for dr boker uh, for what's your advice for those who want to establish simulation center would they hire or would they buy equipments ap uh, apart from the, those we collect from all the equipments but for the high fidelity uh, mannequins would you hire or would you buy because they change rapidly and they go outdated very fast. So what's your, what's your advice for us? Uh, I would, uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad, I would just uh, come first question and then come to this one. I would uh, say just use this crisis resource management uh, because it, it gather all the uh, things that uh, Dr. Shams has said in a formal way. This is what aviation has been using for the last 60 years. It's the same things, you know, like CRM principles, situation awareness, sit back. It's human to panic. It's human to also tell yourself in two microseconds inside, who pushed me in this job? Uh, why not dermatology? Why not radiology? Have all that discussion inside your brain for m micro two point seconds, but in front of everybody, and inside yourself, you say, I have to call CRM principles. I have the card in my pocket. Get it out. You could go that. And that's what they do in evasion. They use cognitive aids. If you have the cards in your pocket, you could look at it. I will do this and do this and do this. Uh, it's like uh, it's a very simple technique. If you're trained to do it, you will do all the good things that Dr. Muhammad have said. Uh, how to build simulation program. Uh, you need to have faculty, uh, a lot of people, I tell you in Saudi Arabia, we do have today simulators that could cover, I think, the earth and Kaman Kaukabin Akharin. And it's all in museums. They have all the equipments, but it is developing the people, the faculty, the team that works. That's what matters. Uh, I could tell you an example. I've been in this field for eight years now. We've uh, done uh, this year we've done three conferences for the last five years we've done over 12 conferences in the region everybody will buy equipment and the equipment will collect dust you need to build a program and that's what accreditation for simulation is you need to build faculty you need to do need assessment I'll be talking about this tomorrow the focus on equipment and equipment and place and money will kill the program because you can't have enough money to get all the equipment. You're right. You could have obsolete equipment if you don't have a program. So I think with programs, we've started programs with limited budgets, with extensive budgets. You have to have plan to use it uh, and then go what you need to get out of the program. That's a good question to start with. Did I answer your question or? Okay, thank you.